So, Tony, um, you're 92 years old now and you've been a Royal Academician for 40 years, but painting obviously runs in your blood because your mother, Phyllis, was also a painter. Mm -hmm. um, and you're about to have this exhibition at the Heatherly School of Fine Art with her work, your work, and also your three daughters' work, who are also all artists. And yeah. Jane is here today, she's a sculptor. So, um, why, how did the show come about? Why are you having it now? Well, I'm often going, going to Heatherley's for an exhibition there. and um, one day, about a year ago, uh, I, I, the thought came to my head that as my mother was at Heatherley's when she was 19, and because she was born in 1900, 1919 and 1920, she was taught by Miss Nell they uh, too uh, was now obviously knew about the impressionists and um the color, color uh, some of her pictures were very brilliant brilliant in purples and yellows the complement complementary colors obviously she was going to be a painter as her parents were very listening to her i think uh, go to art school and i suppose that, that then as heather is would would be a good mixture between young ladies and a good place uh, in the address would have been okay with it. Uh, of course, unfortunately, we haven't got any record of what she did. Mm. Heather is obviously gave her confidence to do what she wanted to do. And I knew we had the work tucked away, which had never been shown, and as a chance to show her, really, um, for almost the first time since she died in 1929. Not a very long life for a painter, really. She painted for just a decade, really. A decade was exactly it, yes, exactly, yes. But she was very promising at the time. She got praised by Augustus John and William Orpin. Uh, yes, yes, she had a following, obviously, and um, she she exhibited at the Royal Institute of Oil Paintings, and, and uh, the, the great uh, uh, triumph was that uh, she had a picture of an apple in blossom, an old apple tree, mm -hmm. in um, accepted in the summer exhibition. My father didn't believe her. Take what you will of that, and um, and I wished he had uh, because it was obviously, especially just a, a man's point of view. Maybe so. <laughs> he knew that she was a very good painter indeed, and said said um, wonderful things about her, uh, about how uh, uh, the necessity to work uh, in India and. Um, uh, the excitement and how much it meant to her, her eye for colour, and in, 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 in it made him see things completely differently through her eyes. So um, he was overjoyed about this, and so was she. But and it would have been a wonderful thing to have a, a, a sort of confidence that she would have got more confidence, and I think uh, she, she would have set out with renewed spirit sort of thing, but it wasn't to be because of this, this was, I call it silly, hunting accident, really. So she died before the work was shown in the exhibition? Uh, yes, yeah, she, she died as a, a heroically kind of thing, trying to do, get over the lunch. I mean, she, she was very brave, a foolhardy, she, uh, but, but she had to jump that, make the horse jump over the fence. No. And yeah. you were just six at the time, so yes, how well do you remember your mother and do you remember her painting when you were a child? I remember a lovely walk by the stream, uh, playing when I was about five, and uh, I, I do remember her painting a last, uh, yes, uh, 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 what we call the tool shed. It was where the tools were, it was a little low kind of shed, a brick with a vine on it, but I do remember her painting in the garden, yes, yes. Of course, it didn't make much sense to, to what she was doing, but yeah, I do, yeah. And you, you were given her, her, or you found her paint books when you were 15? 
true, true, yes. Were you already painting yourself by that point, or was that...? Uh, yes, I was, yes. I think that's why my father was, um, uh, thought it, he'd hand the whole lot over to me. It was wonderful to have this old 16 by 12 paint box, which just he'd have on a knee or uh, uh, taking out the landscapes. And, um, and it all had the, the smells of stored up and the brushes and the, and um, uh, paint tubes and what a treasure kind of thing. Uh, and Aladdin's cave. How influential do you think she was on your starting to paint and your becoming a, an artist? Uh, obviously very. Uh, I, I knew what she could do and uh, she had a, an amazingly kind of um, positive and um, uh, no hesitation. So I, uh, I was in competition with with her, and my father w would say, um, "Not have to fill standards, or sort of thing." <laughs> uh, they kept me kept me going, and to this day, I, I I look at pictures, having a coffee downstairs, and, and I I can tell when I'm in, it, the coffee works. Her pictures look wonderful. And I'm inspired. And every time I see something new in the pictures, and uh, that's a, so still she's one recognizes her touch, her eye for color, um, uh, the joy which she got from looking at uh, landscape, especially woodland scenes. And he, she was absolutely spot on with. Uh, the light and shade of shadows. Now I, I try and arrest a shadow, but it's very different. Ten minutes later, and half an hour later, and I, I, I lost the plot. She could, she, she was like a laser beam. She could catch the sky and and put it so that it made sense, like constable. Uh, no hesitation ever. What's that? I mean, have you? Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> I've seen the pictures. <laughs> you know the pictures. Yeah. How how they are. Um, it, it, well, no hesitation to put the one word, but sort of direct. They're very sure, very determined, very direct. Yeah. That's right. And uh, I think you're rather like her, really. And uh, I'd love you, to have met you, her. You, you were, you're a much better driver than her. Uh, <laughs> she she had accidents. I think you're a bit of accident prone, but you're, you're amazing in your space. I skirt danger. You do, yes, yes, that's right, yes, very good. And a good sculptor. So she, she, I think she's got the physical sort of feeling, which my mother had to, uh, to, to continue the, the line. Yes, that came about uh, through kind of, um, why not? Why not uh, include um, my daughters? Um, that it would make an, an interesting exhibition, is that right? Yes, yes. So, Jane, you're a sculptor, and then um, you've got another sister who's a ceramicist. Yes. And Claire. then a painter. Uh, it's, well, there's Claire who's a ceramicist, and Sarah is a designer. Okay. More, more design, yeah. And do you feel that the three of you were influenced in your life choices by your father? Or oh, I certainly, yeah, I think so. Um, my father met my mother at, um, when she was a student, and she, yes. she wanted to become a sculptor, oh, yes. and I think that has also influenced me. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, That's true, yeah. She became a homemaker. But, you know, she, she, became more. she became a homemaker. Home, yes. Because there were three of us, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And Dad was always painting. <laughs> but yeah, no, having, yes, having Dad around was, was, was inspirational because he, he was so um, disciplined, I suppose, and concentrated and, and uh, always painting. Did you ever, as children, paint with your father or work with oh, your yeah, father? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we used to go out. He used to lend us his paints, and I, I attempted to, but I, I must admit, I think, I prefer three dimensions mm -hmm. than two. I find um, two dimensions a little bit restricting. But yeah. 
Um, what, can you tell us a bit about your practice and what, what sort of materials you work with? Um, I tend to make quite large pieces that are often site specific um, um, installations that involve lots of different sorts of materials. I've, I've been through um, phases where I've used a lot of wood, a lot of construction, um, and at the moment I'm using uh, feathers. I'm making things with feathers and um, yeah a whole sort of variety of materials I think I respond very much to materials um, and and sort of tend to work through series of pieces with certain types of materials so I wouldn't say um, my I have a signature style in the sense that dad does but um, I very um, I do like making large pieces and trying to be ambitious um, and it's, which makes it often quite hard to show the work because of the space issues um, and um, often they're quite fragile so uh, and and they're quite hard to store <laughs> but but yeah I I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, I've often, I'd also oh yes I did quite a lot of casting at one point um, because I thought well I want these things to be less vulnerable less fragile so I did quite a lot of work for outdoors um, sort of garden pieces, so quite a sort of wide variety. Yeah. Are you making something specific for this Heatherly show? I'm trying to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to 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 react to the space. Um, it's actually a piece. It's called shrapnel, and it's slightly based on what's going on in Syria and around there. Um, so I tend to respond to situations going on in the world and in my own personal life. I'm hoping that this piece will be quite dramatic. It will interact with the space, but it won't dominate the space. The large piece I made before this was called Toxic Tears, and it was based on the death of uh, my father, uh, my son's father, and um, that was that was quite a big piece, but you know, emotional resonance I felt. Yeah. So, Tony mentioned that he sometimes felt you know, compared to his mother, and his work wasn't as good or was as good. Do you, do you feel that kind of... Oh, I know, I mean, Dad is, Dad is, Dad is a phenomena. Um, I, I, I can't keep up with him, really, in terms of his energy and commitment to his practice. I mean, I, I would love to be a full-time artist, but I'm, unfortunately I have to, um, to earn a wage, and I teach part-time. Yeah. So you, you, you kept your end up all the time, yeah. in spite of uh, being a, a mother and, um, and, and teaching. Amazing uh, how you got, you go, you've got the studio now and you go there mm. whenever yeah. you can. Yeah. So you, you've got the, the necessary drive, sure. which um, persistence, you know. The item drive. Something like that, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Claire's work is quite um, connected more probably with your work in the sense that she's quite highly decorative, her work's quite, and um, quite ah. gestural. I mean, it's very, very delicate, very sensitive work, but um, quite painterly, the glazes that she uses. So it'd be, it'd be really nice. I mean, I think it'd be really nice for everybody to see work together um, and and it's been great working together to try and put the show on to to design the private view card and to, to write about each other and to um, to yeah to help each other out it's lovely, it was, uh, as a family isn't it? yeah yes. yeah it has yeah. it's brought us together quite a bit more it's nice yes 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 and then um, You've worked in lots of different media, so oils, watercolours, drawing, pastels. Mm. The works that you're going to show in this exhibition, do you know, are they all going to be paintings? Uh, yes, they're all going to be paintings. Uh, I, I must admit that um, a, a lot of them will be portraits, uh, right from the beginning, from a self-portrait I painted when I was uh, 17, to uh, my sister and uh, uh, right through, because... Um, Heatherly specialises in portrait painting, so hopefully some of the students will have a look. The rest of the pictures are a couple of landscapes, a studio interior, 
or, or two, which I'm now doing. Uh, staircase, maybe? Mm? A staircase, maybe? Oh, staircase, staircase, yes. Um, it's a view of the staircase through, through the door, yes. That will definitely go in. And all of the portraits, were they done from life? Uh, yes. I, I, I will say this also while I'm at it, that um, since I paint, some people call it au plein air, I like to say just directly from nature, um, they all are done on the spot. They're never go taken back to the studio. That's a different thing altogether. Um, because I rely upon the on the vivid kind of re-experiencing every time and moving the picture about until it actually makes sense and construct your mind likewise and sort of just gels. And some of them, like the studio interiors, take weeks. And um, uh, how much do you plan them in advance? Do you sketch them first? No, I go straight onto the canvas. Uh, no preliminary drawing. No, no. The thing about Dad's mother's work is it's it is quite small, quite intimate. Mm. Yes, and, it, yes. And Dad's is more, I know, gestural, uh, a bit expressive. A little bit more flamboyant. Perhaps. Flamboyant, mm. even yes. Uh, Showy. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Showy. A show off. Show well, I do believe in the. Uh, uh, getting your pictures about the place, and uh, we, we are supposed to show. Even when they did cave drawings, I always uh, they wanted the, the women in the cave to look at the, the results of their hunting. They did the things because they wanted to hunt, but the women who were doing the meals and sorting out the herbs, which were poison, they must have been aware. The men were showing off. I think <laughs> what a bison was, or. Thirty or forty, fifty thousand years ago. <laughs> so yes, I, I, I'm not a kind of high, high way. I like to get out. You're following in the tradition of the cavemen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I mean, I, I, I'm also good at going out in the streets now, which is very much like hunting because, one would, especially when you come back. I feel like Van Gogh come back. He'd come back and having had nothing to eat all day, and he, but he'd. I'm sure he had some satisfaction having gone out in the wild. Uh, so um, yes, it's, it's a little bit like hunting. Now I feel I'm concentrating much more being here because of. Um, the further you take the picture, then the more you're going for, really. So I think this being in the studio and not at, trotting off to Egypt or India or whatever, uh, the, the, it's all here and you don't need to go anywhere. And um, you need, but you do need the time to do what I can't, what I must do to to, uh, because you don't learn, you don't learn to do it well. You, you learn to make it more difficult for yourself, more problems, more. It's always a problem. Yes, that's right. Which you've got to solve. And of course, another thing is that that, that, that I get a lot of tuition, as it were, and <laughs> of um, what they they tell me what they think about the work, my work. Your daughters? Yes. <laughs> yes well, Dad do. is always, you're always asking for feedback, aren't you? I'm afraid I, yeah, I am, yes. And, <laughs> I mean, we, we, we try and give him positive, well, well <laughs> constructive feedback. I forget what you say. Um, oh, you, you say, get it more sculptural. Yeah, I say, don't forget the edges. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, it needs to be more physical. Or sculptural. So you see, it's soft. <laughs> Sometimes it works. I don't think my mother had any body advising her at all. <laughs> she just went and did it. But I, yeah. I have to have. No, a, I have to have support. Support. Yeah, we've been very involved. We we visit Dad a lot, and we um, 
be that we liked him. He, uh, he asks us to comment, which I think is great. You know, it's, um, he's very humble in his work. <laughs> or mixed. <laughs> A humble show off. <laughs> 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 Contradictions, yes. <laughs>